Hi, I'm Jim DiCola, Master Luthier for Gibson Guitars. In this segment, I'd like to explain the neck adjustment process. Guitar necks need to be adjusted because the string, as it's struck, has a certain excursion or orbit. Think of, you know, holding a string, you know, hitting it in the middle, how at the ends it doesn't move, but in the center it moves. So to compensate for that, guitar necks need to have a slight amount of what's called relief. And that's the amount of allowable curvature in that neck to provide a clean action after you strike that string. Now, there's many factors on uh, that can contribute to why a neck has to be adjusted. That could be changes in humidity as a guitar either absorbs moisture or loses moisture in the neck would cause the neck to either back bow if it absorbs moisture or under bow if it loses moisture or a change of string gauges. You may buy a guitar and you know it has a lighter or heavier set of string that you're accustomed to and that tension difference from the different string gauges will, will allow that neck to move uh, in accordance of what that string gauge or change is. So necks will need to be adjusted for that. Now another great and interesting fact about neck adjusting and the truss rod is the fact that Gibson actually invented the truss rod in 1921. Prior to that, guitar necks had no means of adjustment. So necks were typically thicker and deeper to counteract that tension from the string and they weren't adjustable. So it kind of, it was what it was. With the advent of the truss rod, now Gibson was able to make a thinner neck front to back, which allowed for a, a more comfortable playing style. Having a neck thinner this way allowed people to play farther up the neck. So as much as the pickup revolutionized the electric guitar, the truss rod revolutionized solo guitar by allowing players to play single note runs all up and down the length of the neck. Prior to that, it was primarily you know rhythm or classical parlor style. So we're very proud of the truss rod and its contributions to the guitar and to music. So to start the adjustment process, we'll first want to remove the truss rod cover from the headstock of the guitar. On the case of a Gibson, we have two screws that holds the truss rod cover on the headstock. You can remove those with a Phillips screwdriver. On an Epiphone, we'll have three screws holding that onto the headstock. Simple Phillips screwdriver removes those. In addition to that, we'll also want the appropriate adjustment wrench. Gibson will use a 5 16th socket wrench. Epiphones will use a four millimeter hex wrench. I also recommend having a capo and a set of feeler gauges. If you don't have a set of feeler gauges, you can also use a business card and a sheet of paper in place of the feeler gauges. Also, tuner. Start out, make sure your guitar is tuned properly to pitch. And then you'll need to give the guitar a play test and then measure it. So you can start out by playing it and sometimes that's very apparent. That sounds very good, but if I inspect the neck, it seems like it has a lot of curvature in an underbow, which will then cause it to buzz at, in the higher fret regions because the fingerboard is curving up. So then it will want to buzz out in that area. So to verify the measurements, we'll use a capo at the first fret to hold the strings down and then we're going to hold the strings down at the neck body joint. In the case of this ES, you know, it, it has more neck length than say a Les Paul, which has a longer heel. And the truss rod really isn't active past the neck joint area. So hold it, you know, at the end of the fingerboard, approximately where that neck joint is. So all the strings are held down. And then you're gonna wanna use a feeler gauge. If you don't ha have a set of feeler gauges, which our spec is five thousandths for the high side, meaning very straight, and for the most extreme, fifteen thousandths. You can use a sheet of paper in place of the five thousandths, which a sheet of paper is typically four thousandths, or an average business card, which is typically about thirteen thousandths. So that, that's close enough. So you'll want to check that distance between this bottom of the string and the top of the fret at the eighth fret. And that's approximately midway of the neck. So you'll slide, in this case, a business card 
or that feeler gauge, and in fact, this is more than that 15 thousandths feeler gauge. And as I suspected, this neck has too much underbow, so we'll need to tighten that neck, and then we'll have to retune and then check the setup again. Since the neck is underbowed, we'll use the 5 16 socket wrench and we'll tighten the neck. So to tighten it, place the wrench on the truss rod nut, make sure it's secure so you don't risk having it slip or strip the nut, and then we're gonna tighten it, and I recommend no more than a quarter of a turn at a time because uh, the truss rod is very active, and if you over tighten it, you can cause you know, the neck to crack or delaminate. It's, it's not very likely, but as long as you work in quarter inch, eighth inch or quarter inch turns, you're gonna be safe. So since it's underbowed, we'll turn it clockwise, which would be towards myself, right? So I turned it a quarter turn. Now we'll retune it because every time you adjust the neck, that changes the tension of the neck, which changes the pitch of the string. So we'll retune it and then check it again. And since the neck was underbowed, now after tightening it, everything is sharp. So I'll uh, tune it down a little bit, tug the strings and tune it back up. Now, put the capo back in place, hold the strings now at the neck body joint, and then use the thickness gauges at the eighth fret to check the relief. At this point, we need to go a little bit more. It got a lot closer, but there's still some gap there. So I'll give it another quarter turn and retune. Now we'll replace the uh, capo, hold the strings now at the body joint, measure again, and here I see it's a little lower than that, and we'll check under the high E side too. And that's a little tighter there, and a little more than the five. Sometimes you'll find when you adjust your neck, because of the tension difference between the wound strings and the plain strings, you'll have a little bit more relief on the wound side than you will on the plain string side, which is a good scenario. That way, your plain strings can have a straighter neck relief, uh, which isn't as critical as the wound strings, which tend to ex exert their uh, orbit a bit more. So that's actually a perfect scenario. So now, let me measure what it actually is. It's a little more than five, which is good. We're about eight on the low E side, and we're a little tighter than that on the high E side. So we're about six there. So it's, it's on the lower side of tolerance, a little bit straighter on the high E, and we're about middle of the road on the low side. So right there, I'd say we're great. So now we have the neck adjusted on the Gibson 335. We'll just need to put the truss rod cover back on. But now I'd like to show you an Epiphone acoustic. Whether a guitar is an electric or acoustic, the neck adjustment process would be the same. But the difference here is that Epiphone uses a four millimeter hex wrench instead of the 5 16 socket wrench that the Gibson uses. The adjustment process will be the same. So we'll play the guitar. It sounds like it's buzzing at this end of the neck. I'm gonna put the capo on it and hold it at the neck body joint. All the strings down. Oh, and I can see it's almost touching in the middle. The 5,000 feeler gauge won't even go under there without hitting a string. So now we'll need to loosen the truss rod. Again, work in quarter turn increments. So to loosen it, we're gonna turn the truss rod wrench counterclockwise, which is away from you. 
So we'll, and now we're hitting a string. Sometimes you may want to take that G string and D string and pull them out of the nut, nut slot and out of the way so you can get a little bit more action with the wrench. Give it a quarter turn. Now we're going to tune the guitar again to pitch and then test it again. Now we'll put the capo back in place. So it's a little tighter than 15, a little more than 5 thousandths under both E strings. So that's good. So it's playing clean open position where it was buzzing before, so now the neck is adjusted properly. So I've showed you how to adjust the truss rod using the proper and recommended tools. However, sometimes you're in a situation and you may not have all those tools. You may be at a gig, maybe in summer where it's very humid, your neck can literally change that quickly in the in-between sets. So you may have to adjust your guitar neck, uh, you know, in the middle of a gig. And if you don't have all your tools, but you still have your wrench because most people keep their wrench in their case, you can just eyeball it. And a lot of times, you know, I'll even do that. Uh, once you've done it long enough, you, you know what to look for. So a lot of times I'll hold that first string down, the low E with my index finger, hold it at the body joint, and then with my pinky, I'll stretch out into that eighth fret area, and then I'll press that string down to see how much bounce or clearance you have from that top of that fret to the bottom of the string. And after you've done it a while, you know what to look for. And it, you know, like I said, anywhere from a sheet of paper to a business card, and you check both high E and low E, and look for that same clearance. So again, you know, if you have a sheet of paper under your high E and maybe a business card in your low, that's a great scenario. And you can adjust it, retune it, and check it accordingly. So that's another way uh, to accomplish that same neck adjustment. So remember, anytime anything changes the tension of your neck, whether it's your string gauge, the humidity, or just your playing style, you'll need to adjust the neck. And doing so, make sure you take your measurements and make sure you return to proper pitch after each adjustment. If you do that, you'll be fine. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the next episode of Gibson's Guide to Guitar Setup and Maintenance.